Right, you know why you're here, you don't have time for any of these long intros, so let's go! Hi friends, my name is Bart, welcome back to the channel and this week I'm going to try to answer a question that I get a lot. Now here's the thing, I read about 50 books a year and a lot of people uh, tell me, oh you know, I would love to read some more myself but I'm too busy. But the thing is, I'm busy too. So today I'm going to share some of my proven practical tips with you on how to read more and more often while having a busy life. Now, first of all, as a disclaimer, this is not a video on how to read faster. I still want you to read in your own pace, you know, soak up the stories, enjoy. It is first and foremost a video on how to sneak some reading into your daily schedule. Ready to start reading more? Let's go. First of all, I would like to stress that reading is supposed to be fun. And a lot of videos here on YouTube will tell you to set yourself some goals, some reading goals, some pages per day goal. Now, personally, I don't believe in setting yourself goals. And if you want to know why, you can always look at the entire video I made about how to fail your reading goals. So I'm not going to tell you to set some goals, I'm going to tell you to try and enjoy reading again. Because if you're having fun doing something, you're bound to do it more often. If you find reading fun, you're bound to find the needed motivation to start reading again and again. Now, some people do need some sort of pressure, be it from a goal or social pressure. So why don't you do a buddy read? Read along with someone else because half the fun of reading is talking about the book and the characters in it with someone else. Why not join a book club online? and share that reading experience. It can help you tackle a difficult read. A recent example of my own book club is A Priory of the Orange Tree. It is an absolute brick of a fantasy book. I think 800 and something pages. And they did a buddy read. Each day they would read about, I think 30 pages and then come back to the group and discuss. It is a great way to tackle those challenging reads. So above anything else, have fun. As a second tip, I would invite you to sit down for a moment and think about which moments seem to be downtime moments, lost moments, and we all have them. A daily commute, sitting in the car waiting for the children to exit the school, having to wait at a doctor's appointment. These are the moments that we often grab for our phones and start scrolling on TikTok or social media or whatever. But why not have a book instead? Why not read a little chapter? Reading can very much be a bite-sized activity. A lot of people seem to think that you have to read a book from cover to cover. You sit down and start reading a book and finish it in one sitting. But like I said in tip one, there are no rules. And if you want to read five pages, then by all means go ahead. It is still reading. So identify these little lost moments, these downtime moments that you often have and use them to start reading again. Now the third tip ties in with the previous one and it is to have a book on you at all times. It's simple really, in order to read, you need a book. So why not developing the habit to keep a book on you at all times and keep a book in different places. Keep one in the car, in your purse, in your inside pocket, on your nightstand. Having a book ready to go will actually increase your chance of reading instead of grabbing for your phone. I once did the experiment of swapping my phone time for reading time and the results were amazing. If you haven't seen this video, you can watch it here. And this is also where ebooks and audiobooks come in very handy. They fit in your purse, fit in your pocket, you have them ready at any time, any place, and they most certainly still count as reading. Especially audiobooks are ideal for those mindless tasks that you need to do during the day. Maybe you're vacuuming, maybe you're cooking. You can pop on your headphones and listen to a few chapters while doing so. I myself, for example, listen to a lot of audiobooks while walking the dog. That's about an hour a day I can sneak into my daily routine. Every day. It makes all the difference. And it puts the fun back into sometimes boring tasks. Tip number four is to keep the flow going. Reading is a bit like working out or going to the gym. Once you stop for a while, it sometimes is hard to get back in. So it's better to keep that reading flow going. Always have that next read ready to go. Already download it to your Kindle or your audio device. Already have a TBR stack of books ready to go next to your bed. But make sure that once you finish a book, you can start with the next. And this is where I find that alternating between different genres comes in handy as well. Mix it up. If you had a challenging read or perhaps a very big book, then why not pick something 
quick and easy to read for you next. It keeps you in that reading zone and you'll be ever so more motivated to already pick up the next read once you're finished. It is all about motivation and nothing gets you motivated more than having books at the ready that you're really looking forward to. And to help you get into that reading flow and keep it up, there is our fifth tip and that is to make a habit out of reading. Treat reading as if it was an appointment or a date even. Because if you think about it, we might skimp on our plans or resolutions, but we almost never forget about an appointment. Why not pick a moment in the day that is your reading time? Sit down, have a cup of coffee, have a cup of tea, whatever you like, and reserve that slot for reading. Now it can be any moment of the day, but I personally like to read before going to bed. And it even has an added advantage. The blue light that we get from our screens inhibits our creation of melatonin, a body natural hormone that helps with falling asleep and getting a really good sleep. So I try to get rid of all screens about an hour before going to bed. And again, that's an hour that I can dedicate to reading. It is win-win really. I get to read more and I get to sleep better. But like I said, it can be any time of day. Maybe you have half an hour to spare somewhere in the afternoon. Why not dedicate it to reading? So now I want to hear from you. Are you going to try any of these tips? Or maybe you have this brilliant tip on how to read more? Then by all means, let me know in the comments and we can talk some more. And now that you have some more time to read, why not find your next favorite book with these recommendations? That's it for me for this week. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked this video. And if you did, leave a like and a subscribe. See you next week. Bye.